In 1991, a new young player would arrive at Parma's academy. He played as a midfielder and showed great potential, but he would shock his coaches as, after feeling inspired by Thomas Nukonu's performances in the 1990 World Cup, he would decide to leave his outfield position and start playing as a goalkeeper. As crazy as it might have seemed to the people around him, within two weeks he would have convinced everyone he was the best goalkeeper in the team. His success would be so evident that, sooner than he could have ever wished for, he would be called up for the first team. The 17-year-old would debut in the Serie A against AC Milan and manage to keep a clean sheet despite them dominating the match. Everyone soon realized that this was a name to remember. Gianluigi Buffon. That same season, he would only play 8 more matches, conceding 1 goal per game on average. On his second season, he would take over the main goalkeeper role, at just 18 years of age, helping Parma get an amazing second place in the Serie A and qualifying for the Champions League for the first time in the history of the club, as he only conceded 17 times in the league. The next season, they would only finish 5th, and in the Champions League they'd finish 2nd in their group, which would not be enough to get them to the knockout stage. That same year, he would earn his nickname Superman, as the 19-year-old fearlessly stepped onto the goal as Ronaldo Phenomeno, Ballon d'Or winner at the time, prepared to take a penalty. Buffon would save it and take off his shirt as he showed the fans the Superman logo on his chest. That summer, he would earn his first ever international cap in a game against Russia. His fourth season at Parma would be his best, as they beat Bordeaux, Atletico Madrid and finally Marseille in the final to win the club's second ever UEFA Cup. That same year, they also won the Coppa Italia for the second time ever in the history of the club as they defeated Fiorentina in the final. I think it's necessary to mention that this success isn't exclusively because of Buffon. Parma had managed to assemble one of their best ever teams with names like Cannavaro, Crespo, Tura and Veron. Despite this, he would win Serie A Goalkeeper of the Year, the Bravo Award which was the equivalent to the Coppa or Golden Boy Award at the time, and get his first ever nomination to the Ballon d'Or. He would play two more seasons for Parma. In the last, he would get them to the Coppa Italia final, but they would lose. In the league, they would finish fourth place, but he would once again win Serie A Goalkeeper of the Year and get nominated for the Ballon d'Or. The next year, Parma would finally succumb to the pressure of selling him as Juventus would offer 52 million euros, by far the most expensive goalkeeper of all time, a record that would be only beaten 17 years later. What might actually surprise you is that Buffon almost signed for Barcelona, but decided to stay in Italy because of his father who always had the dream of watching him win the Serie A. His first season at Juventus would go by smoothly as he would concede the least goals in the league out of any goalkeeper and win the Serie A for the first time as he took the Serie A Goalkeeper of the Year award home for a third time. In the summer, he would play every minute of the 2002 World Cup as Italy got knocked out by South Korea despite Buffon saving a penalty once again. His second season at Juventus would be one of his best ever. He'd start the year by winning the Italian Super Cup, they would win the Serie A for the second consecutive time as Buffon had the least considered goals in the league again and most importantly they would reach the Champions League final by defeating Barcelona and Real Madrid as Buffon saved the Luis Figo penalty which would have led Juventus to being eliminated from the competition. In the final, they would face AC Milan. Despite both teams managing to create dangerous goal-scoring occasions, even hitting the woodwork twice, they would go into penalties. Buffon would have another heroic performance, saving two penalties, but it would not be enough as Juventus managed to miss three of them, which would see them lose to AC Milan. Despite this upset, Buffon would not only win UEFA Goalkeeper of the Year, but the UEFA Player of the Year as well. The next season would be disappointing, with Juventus finishing third place in the league and Buffon failing to win the Serie A Goalkeeper of the Year award. Still, he would make it into the UEFA Team of the Year for the third time. His next two years would be very average, as he would win the league twice, as well as the Serie A Goalkeeper of the Year award. All of this would seem irrelevant, as in 2006, dozens of Serie A players, including Buffon, would be involved in an illegal betting scandal. This scandal would put his place as a main goalkeeper for Italy in danger. But it would soon be absolved of all charges, as it was proven he never put wagers on matches he was directly involved in. Still, Juventus would be charged for match fixing, as they would be stripped of their two previous titles, as well as relegated to the Serie B.
This drama was put on hold as the World Cup arrived. Italy would finish top of their group as Buffon would only concede once. Then they would beat Australia, Ukraine and Germany as Buffon managed not to concede throughout all of those games. As they reached the final, they would have to face France. Buffon would save Italy multiple times during the match, managing to maintain the draw as they would go into penalties. This time Buffon wouldn't save any, but Italy would still win and become world champions as Trezeguet would hit the crossbar. Despite playing the rest of the year in the Serie B, Buffon would finish second place in the Ballon d'Or, the fourth goalkeeper ever to make the podium, and only the second to get second place or better as Levi Sheen managed to win it in 1963. He would finish the season by winning Serie B and getting promoted back to Serie A. That year he would be the key player of the team as he managed to get them to finish third place and managed to win his seventh Serie A goalkeeper of the season, as well as getting nominated for the Ballon d'Or once again. For the next few years, Juventus would struggle to recover from their relegation as many key players left the club. They would only win their next trophy by 2012 as they managed to take the league title once again, mainly due to Buffon's amazing performances throughout the year. He would eventually describe this as the second greatest moment of his career only behind the World Cup final. The next year, he would join forces with Chiellini, Bonucci and Barzagli as they became the strongest defense in Europe, only conceding 16 goals all season. The same year, he would also become captain of the team following the departure of Alessandro Del Piero. Once again he would keep consistently performing and taking all the domestic awards for best goalkeeper, but in 2015 he would make it to his second Champions League final as they defeated Real Madrid in the semi-finals. It had been 12 years since the last time it happened but Buffon was once again in the final. He would face Barcelona who would beat Juventus with goals by Neymar, Suarez and Rakitic. Still, Buffon would beat Ter Stegen to the UEFA team of the season. In the next season, he would beat the all-time unbeaten streak record in the Serie A after managing to go 974 minutes without conceding a single goal while also managing to keep 21 clean sheets and winning the Juventus Player of the Season award. In the 2016-2017 season, he would once again make it to the UCL final as he seemed nearly unbeatable that season. The game would be heavily talked about, especially as Bernaldo would face Buffon in what seemed almost like an unstoppable force meets an immovable object scenario. Regardless, Ronaldo would score 20 minutes into the match with his first shot as he would iconically approach the cameras and celebrate by yelling, one shot, boom. Ronaldo would manage to score once again as the game would eventually end 4-1 as Buffon lost his third Champions League final. By the end of 2017, Buffon would finish 4th in the Ballon d'Or, narrowly missing the podium despite being 39 years old. That's absolutely unbelievable. The next season, Buffon would once again face Real Madrid and Ronaldo, this time in the semi-finals. The first leg would be awful for Juventus, as Ronaldo scored twice in a 3-0 win for Real Madrid, including his famous bicycle kick. As it seemed Buffon would be knocked out once again, the second leg would fuel his hopes of once again making it to a final as Juventus managed to get a 3-0 lead and tie the match. Unfortunately, by the 92nd minute, Ronaldo would tower over the defense to nearly assist Lukas Vazquez, who would only fail to score as Benatia would foul him in the penalty box. Buffon lost his mind and started cursing out and yelling at the referee, who would send him off shortly after. Ronaldo would eventually score the penalty and send Real Madrid to the final, as Buffon watched his dreams being shattered once again. This would be the last straw for Buffon, who would leave for PSG where he would win the league in the first season and once again be left disappointed with the club's performance in the Champions League as he would watch Man United get a 3-goal comeback in the second leg of the last 16 match. That same season, Cristiano Ronaldo would join Juventus and Buffon, who always wanted to play with him as the two had developed a close relationship over the years, decided to come back, where he has been playing since as a backup goalkeeper for Cesny. Buffon is a true legend of the game. His name carries the weight of his performances, being directly associated with being unbeatable on goal. Buffon is a true commander, always being able to impact the game in a much more expensive way than the average goalkeeper. From young prodigy to one of the biggest names football has seen, the only downside to his career being the lack of a Champions League trophy. I will now try my best to rate him accurately as he is the first goalkeeper in the series. First, we will judge him on his reflexes, which are probably the most stunning ability he has and easily earn him a 10 out of 10. 
Then is positioning, which was mostly immaculate, rarely being caught off guard, he gets a 9 out of 10. The third attribute is communication, mainly with the center backs of course, he was amazing at this, easily commanding the defensive line, he gets a 10 out of 10. The fourth is shot prediction, this one is hard to assess as he did get some clutch penalty saves but he always faced criticism for this part of his game, and he gets a 7 out of 10. The last one is mentality, he's always been a calm player and he is notorious for that, but it's hard to forget the few moments where he completely lost it, so he gets an 8 out of 10. Getting into his legacy, first we will take into account his consistency. He was always very good in Italy, but he never spent a considerable amount of time outside of his home country, so it's hard to assess just how good he would be, but due to his good international record, we'll get him an 8 out of 10. Secondly, Flair. It's hard to be entertaining to watch when you're a goalkeeper, but as someone who always played it safe, he isn't the most entertaining goalkeeper, but he surely was charismatic, so he gets a 7 out of 10. Then, we will take into account his trophy cabinet, as he never won a single Champions League, he can't get a perfect score, but he did get a World Cup which is massive, taking into account he spent most of his time in Italy, he also goes down in terms of diversity, so he gets a 6 out of 10. In terms of longevity, he has to get a perfect score, as he has played for 26 years already. Lastly, the icon factor. It's pretty simple. Every 90s kid who went to play in goal would pretend to be Buffon. He is one of the biggest football idols of his generation, easily a 10 out of 10. This totals out to 85 of 100, which is a true statement to how good he was, placing him second on our ranking only behind Cruyff and slightly edging past Roberto Carlos. It's really hard to dislike a player like Buffon, he has always been a great guy even with his lower points in life, being mostly a symbol for excellence in technical terms, the definition of a football role model, even if he did have his bad moments, we just have to hope that others will follow his footsteps.